Iron Supporting Food Banks collects food and cash donations for needy families in Newham Borough and beyond. Please consider making a donation via their Just Giving page, the link for which you will find in the description section of this stream. Come on you irons! Hello ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to the West Ham Massive. Thanks for joining us and please don't forget to like, comment on and share this stream to your social media platforms. Subscribe to our YouTube channel if you haven't done so already and hit the bell icon for alerts and new content. All these things take you seconds to do. They're completely free of charge. We won't have your bank details. We won't do anything nasty to you or your family and you will help grow this channel. We thank you very much indeed for your support in this matter. Charlie and I have just finished a live stream where we discussed goings on with the London Stadium in terms of the lease and all of the rest of it. And we just decided to do a recording to go out. As you watch this, it will be today. But as we are, it's tomorrow. Keeping up? Anyway, so Charlie, I um, just want to go through a couple of little stories with you. Now, obviously, we're going through a lot of transfers and we've obviously done one today as we record this in the shape of Aaron Wan-Bissaka, which is Brilliant. our eighth signing of the transfer window. Tim Stighton's going mad. He's, he's clocking up the old air miles going here, there and everywhere across Europe. Um, but it appears that the, the, it, we're not done there. There's some more rumors, quite strong rumors. It would appear around certain players. Now, I'll deal with this gentleman first because I suspect that this may be the one that's less likely of the two. However, we will explore it. So this is from Give Me Sport and its headline says West Ham submits £17 million offer to sign a gentleman by the name of Nathan Zeze. Now, Nathan Zeze is currently on the books at Nantes in French League 1. And it this story says that we've lodged an offer in the region of 17.09 million pounds or 20 million euros. Now, this is according to Sport Italia. So Nathan Zeze, for people that don't know who this guy is, well, he's a French um, under 18 international and he is he is 19 years of age, six foot three. So he's a big lad, uh, central defender. Um, Probably, I think it's fair to say, though, Charlie, he'd be coming in as, as backup to, obviously, to Debo and Kilman. He wouldn't be a, a, a first pick. But um, what, do you, what do you make of this story? Yeah, I mean, I feel like it's a lot of money to spend on someone that's not a first pick. Um, obviously, compared to, to Debo and to Kilman, I guess it's not a lot of money. It's um, 17 million, and I think it would probably be structured around the similarly to the Lewis Guillermo, we're finding out now between little leaks here and there that actually the Guillermo deal is nowhere near 25 million and it's a lot smaller fee, but then structured about based on appearances. And there was a tweet from, I think it was Sean, that was basically saying, depending on how his value rises and yeah, it, it, it goes up based on that essentially. So, the actual fee that we paid this year for Guillermo is nothing like what was being reported, supposedly. So I think this is probably a similar one. I can't imagine we're putting down a bid of nearly 20 million euros um, for a kid who's pay, played 13 and a bit games um, of professional top division football. So, And of those 13 games, having won two, I think we just looked Ooh. at so. Maybe it's not his fault. Maybe the team was around him was terrible, but it seems like a lot of money to be uh, laying down on someone that's, in my opinion, would come in as 
currently fifth choice. Obviously, if we move someone out, fourth choice, but then kind of steps in the way of Colin Casey's progress and blocks the pathway to the first team for him. Um, yeah, it's, it, it seems a bit of a weird one. I'm wondering if part of the attraction is the fact, and I'm just looking on transfer market for this information, and according to this, he's left-footed. Now, I think it's a fairly well-established fact that left-footed centre-backs don't exactly grow on trees. So as soon as you see a left, a left-footed centre-back, I think that the interest in them becomes a little bit more intensified than it is when it's a right-footed centre-back. Do you think that that would be a fair analysis on my part? Potentially. Potentially, it's one of the options we're looking at should a Gerd leave. I think there's a lot of rumours out there that one of Mavropanos or a Gerd, and actually this is assuming that Kurt Zuma actually does leave, um, despite semi-failing passing somewhat his medical in Qatar or the UAE. Um, I think we're all assuming he goes somewhere, whether that's contract release or to Shabab or Ali. May have got that wrong. Um, so assuming Zuma goes out, it's the reports are that a Gerd and or Mavropanos may leave. Perhaps this is one of the options for that left-hand sided side of defence. And then I know a lot of links have been putting us to... Um, Trevor, Trevor, uh, Trevor Chalaber of Chelsea. Mm. So perhaps perhaps he's the right side adoption. I think they're both similar costs being touted around the £20 million pound mark for, for either. So potentially he's on a list of options. Um, I'd be surprised to see this one come off, this one happen, but what do I know? So if you had to rate this one out of 10, Charlie... What would you give it in in terms of its uh, its real realism in in terms of actually coming to pass? I, th I think it's probably down at a three, something like that, in terms of Ooh. likelihood to happen. Um, I, I I don't see it happening. I could be totally wrong, maybe, but I don't see it happening. I couldn't tell you whether I want it to happen or not. He's played that as I say, thirteen games of top division football. I'm not particularly watching French League, and let alone nonce, every week. Um, that's a weird sentence. But, <laughs> yeah, I, I can't say I've ever seen him kick a football. So it'd be interesting if he came in. I don't think it'll happen. And I don't really have an opinion on whether I'd like it to happen or not. Yeah, I think for me, probably the only... The, the selling points, probably the... the plus points would be he's 19 so you, you're investing in the future he's left footed which as i say they're not exactly growing on trees according to what i'm reading here on wikipedia he's also captained the um his, the, his under under 19s and under 17s team in Brittany when he was coming through but you know so he's got some leadership qualities if you will albeit at a fairly sort of young age, whether he could transfer that into a, a Premier League team if he develops maybe in a certain direction. I, I'm, I'm not too sure. I, I'm probably with you. It's probably uh, a, a low sort of like probability. I'm, I'm probably going to put it at about a four, four and a half myself. But Nathan Zeze, if he came in, I think, yeah, he's one for the future. He's not one for the here and the now. A bit like, I suspect, Luis Guillerme. Yeah, I'd agree. I think whether he's one that comes in, if he were to happen, putting our probabilities aside, if he comes in, is he going to be, or would he be a Guillerme that looks like he's going to be in and around the first team this year, um, which is good, or is he going to be a Luis Ezeal who... Goes and goes and plays a year in the under twenty threes, goes out on loan, perhaps stays at Nantes on loan. I mean, that kind of deal is something that I'd like to see us do more. You see a lot of the top teams do it, buy a good, promising youngster, and just let them stay where they are and develop for another year. I, I couldn't name off the top of my head if we've ever done that with anyone before, but it's something I'd like to see us do more. Um, yeah. I, I, I think it's probably unlikely, um, but watch this space, I guess. 
Yeah, watch this space indeed. Well, let's let's get on to what I would consider to be the more likely of the two stories that we're going to cover on this piece. So this is from Hammers News and the headline reads West Ham in pole position to sign incredible 27 year old Julien Lepetegui closes in on ninth summer deal. And this is today at five minutes past 5 p.m. by the the, uh, the correspondent, Mr. Anthony Martin. And he basically says in this piece, um, if we just scroll down, that we are looking at a gentleman who currently plies his trade in League Earn, and his name is Carlos Soler. Now, this one's probably a little bit more well-known out there in the, the real world, if you will, but he's a seven, tw- £17 million pound apparently he's available for, so this report says. He's a 27-year-old Spanish international who was part of Spain's squad for the Euros, not the Euros, the World Cup in 2022. And he came through at Valencia. And uh, yeah, he's, he's obviously someone with a little bit more in terms of his backstory than the player that we've just referenced, Nathan Zeze. So um, let me just turn it to you now, Charlie. So what are your thoughts on this? You know, do you see that this is a a little bit more in terms of um, credibility than the previous one? I think it's certainly got more credibility about it. Um, It's funny. (laughs) The article obviously mentions that we're in pole position. I've just typed his name into Twitter or X as it is these days, and there's an article saying Brighton are in pole position and mm. an article saying Ralph Sociedad are in pole position all from the last 24 hours. Right. So, yeah, whether we're in pole position or not, or that's just a West Ham take on things, who knows? Um, I think certainly more pedigree. I think he's obviously come straight into the first team. Would he start? I guess is probably a question for each individual fan. I think probably in my... I've seen him play a bit in Champions League. Um, don't watch French football. But so I wouldn't say I've got a complete knowledge of how good he is and what he's good at. But uh, would he come in and start? Probably not for me. I think I think my midfield three would still be Piquet, Caduce and uh, Alvarez. I was very impressed by Rodriguez at the weekend, actually, um, from, the, from the bit we did see against v- uh, Celta Vigo, so probably not one that comes in and starts straight away, but there is obviously close links to Lopetegui. Um, I just wonder if this is one that's going to be a bit difficult to convince him to come when he could go to Rouse or Stead, I don't know, potentially, but Brighton, I think he'd walk in there and, and start. So th- possibly one difficult that's going to be difficult to convince him. Um, but maybe the Spanish links and the Lopetegui links could convince him that he is going to have a big part to play. I think everyone's pretty much in agreement that we're hopefully going to see significantly more substitutions and use of squad rotation this season than we saw last season. I don't, I don't think you could see much less. Um, so I think there certainly will be a case that our bench players this season get used and get chances to impress the manager and their place based on form and merit rather than it just being the same guys despite come rain or shine, despite form that we saw last season. So maybe there's a convincing, convincing argument there that look, he comes in, he may start on the bench. I think a lot of the new signers probably will start on the bench. Um but he'll get opportunities to come in, win a space and plays where well, he keeps it. Um, I think we've got bigger, more pull than Brian. I think we're a bit bigger club than Brian. I don't think that's disrespectful. No. Um, Saucy dad, different kind of fish. Um, but again, I think we can, we've got the pull on Saucy dad because we can pay significantly more money. <laughs> we've seen that. We've seen that with today, bro. We've seen that with other signings over the years. We can outbid these teams from Spain, from Italy, from France in terms of the money we can pay these players. So I think if we wanted him that desperately, we could get him. I, I just wonder whether he's going to want to go somewhere where he's guaranteed to play every week 
given the fact that he's spent the last year or two sat on the bench. What do you think about this, though, Charlie? Do you think it's possible that he comes in? Now, from what I understand, and we discussed this before we hit record, um, that he's probably, if you had to sort of pigeonhole him to a certain position, a certain role in a starting eleven, he would probably be the closest approximation to Lucas Paquetar in that regard. So... Do you think that, okay, maybe he would come in, and, I, and I'm playing devil's advocate here, so please forgive me, um, dear viewers and Charlie as well, um, that he would come in, yes, essentially as Pakatar's backup. And you said, obviously, that you believe that the, the, the new manager, Julien Lepetegui, would do more resting and rotation than Mr. Moyes, who preceded him. I think that's fairly apparent. Um but is it also maybe, do you think that we're putting in place a little bit of preparation if and when, let's say for argument's sake, Lucas Paquetar decides that his future lies elsewhere, um, you know, that he could then, let's just suppose Lucas Paquetar stays for the remainder of this season and then he's off in the, in the summer of 2025 to wherever he goes. And Carlos Soler has had 12 months of working alongside Lucas Paquetar. He's he's ingrained he's grained himself in the in the squad. He's got to know the Premier League, and then he walks in and he's a starting member of of a Premier League team. Is is that something you think could be a possible situation that unfolds? I would hope so. I would hope that there's an element of succession planning. Um, planning for all possibilities. I think we need to do the same caduce <coughs> this for the next summer. I would hope there's an element of succession planning, but I also think there's probably an element with this one where Lopetegui's got potentially three central midfielders, whether you do it holding ones or in the 10, you've got your three in terms of Alvarez, or I've got my three in terms of Alvarez, Caduce and Paqueta. You've then got Rodriguez to back Alvarez up. You've then got James Allprouse and Thomas Suchek to back up Kudus and Paqueta. And I'm not convinced Lopetegui will be happy with either of those options. So I think there's an element of planning for what if may happen in the future with Paqueta, whether that's a transfer, whether that's a ban, that's obviously still on the cards. Um, but I think it's someone that he's probably thinking that he can, if he can shit, and this is the important point and the, the difficult point, if he can shift either Suchek or James Will Prowse, then Soler could come straight in and form part of that two to each position, six man midfield, central midfield. Um, I think the difficult part of that is going to be the shifting on with James Will Prowse. Perhaps he goes back to Southampton, perhaps Suchek goes to Fenerbahce, although he's been linked with, with Jose Mourinho. If there's an ever a Jose Mourinho player, it's uh, Marvin Fellaini or Thomas Suchek, isn't it? So perhaps one of them happens and that's what Tim Stein and Julian Lopetegui and whoever else is involved is thinking. Um, yeah, I, I, th I think it works It works on both fronts. And I, I don't suspect he'll be the only option. I suspect if he does go to Brighton or Sociedad, there'll be a another that, we may or may not have been linked with already in the media. There will be on a short list somewhere that we'll, we'll move, to, move on to if we don't get Soler. So I'll, I'll ask you the same question as we did with the, the previous player. If out of 10 you had to mark the, um, the likelihood of Carlos Soler being a West Ham player by the time this particular transfer window slams shut. They always slam shut um, at the, at the, um, the 31st. Yeah, they're, they're never just given a sort of like a, a gentle sort of pull to. They're always slammed shut. Um, That's why the stadium's folding down. Yeah, yeah. Tell me, um, what, what would you give it out of 10? Uh, I think it's certainly more likely than the centre-back. Um whose name I've forgotten already, ZZ or Zaza <laughs> or Zuzu or whatever his name was. Um, I think it's more likely than that. Am I convinced it's definitely going to happen? I think no. I think 
for the last god three four five weeks i've been pretty convinced that wambasaka was happening um so those sorts of transfers you get the eight seven eight nine of probability i, I don't think this is quite there for a couple of reasons for the reasons about does he come in and start straight away walk into the first team probably not um but yeah i'll probably give it a six i think it's probably more likely than not but I, I wouldn't put any money on it put it that way fair enough fair Yourself? enough well it's been um i'm gonna go i i put it this way i've i've heard a bit more noise about this guy than i have the previous guy that we spoke about um i would probably rate this a little bit higher than yourself i'm i'm gonna give it a solid six and a half seven fair yeah fair uh, it's, uh, we'll, it's also we'll worth saying. Yeah, it's also worth saying that actually, at the moment, we can't register anyone else, can we? Um, we need to move people on before our squad is currently full. Wambasaka was our twenty-fifth squad player, so I think that potentially includes Andy Irving. Probably goes out on loan um, yep. or sold. So there's definitely manu- movements that can be made in that squad, but. At the moment, technically, our squad size is full. So, Sean's actually done a tweet an hour ago. I don't know if you've seen it whilst we've been uh, chatting away. But Sean Weston's put out a tweet saying, West Ham's summer transfer business is 90% complete, reveals a senior club source. Wonder who that is. The focus Mm. is now on getting a few fringe players out to get them off off the wage bill and bring bring in a bit of money. Sadly, that is easier said than done. But that's where our attention is. So it sounds like the focus, as we sort of suspect, is getting that's the one, getting people out at the moment. Sean, I think, is quite pessimistic, is the wrong word. Conservative with a small C. I'm not accusing him of anything politically. Um, Sean's quite reluctant to put out transfer news or leaks that we're going to do this, we're going to do that. I think the budget was what 40 50 million at the start of the summer well that's clearly under undervalued um so i think when he says 90 percent of the leaks are that there's going to be t- at least two more coming in from the likes of x so i think we will see a couple more but yeah i think i don't suspect we're going to see anything for a little while until I, we get ings corne zuma off the books um and as sean says i would agree with him it's a lot easier said than done i think zuma we're going to end up well that best case giving away for free worst case giving away for free and subsidizing some of his wages ings will probably be the same Call i a. think Z- zuma will probably be have you ever seen sort of like when you're walking past someone's house and they they'll have like a you know, something just literally put outside their front, sort of like their front garden fence, and there'll be a note on it saying free to a good home or something like that. That will basically be what we do with Kurt Zuma, won't it? Yeah. 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 Just stick him out and one of the uh, lovely local scrap metal dealers will come and pick him up and put him in the van and drive off. (laughs) Absolutely, with their waste collection license. Yeah, I bet right. he's got a few bits of metal in his knees. To be fair, so probably be aware of a few quid. <laughs> he's got more metal than he's got bone and ligament and cartilage and all the rest of it. But there you go. Yeah, and I'm probably but... surprised that he didn't pass a medical. Not really. Not really <laughs> surprised in the slightest. Um, I'm surprised no. that anyone in in the UAE is surprised. But what can I say? But. Anyway, right, I think we will knock that on the head there, guys. Um, Thanks for your time there, Charlie. And um, as you guys at home, as I always ask you to do, please don't forget to like, comment on, and share this stream to your social media platforms. Subscribe to our YouTube channel if you haven't done so already. Make sure you hit the bell icon for alerts and new content. As I always say, all these things are free to do. They take literally the click of a mouse. And we haven't got your personal details. We're not going to take any money off you. And it all helps grow the channel. Thank you very much indeed for your support in this particular endeavor. Please also consider giving your support to the Iron Supporting Food Banks charity. And we will see you next time. Come on, you Irons. 
Take care. Iron Supporting Food Banks collects food and cash donations for needy families in Newham Borough and beyond. Please consider making a donation via their Just Giving page, the link for which you will find in the description section of this stream. Come on you irons.